So it's 2001, and I was right here on the UW-Green Bay campus as a graduate student studying environmental science and policy. And during our perspectives class, we were given an assignment to write a full proposal for an operating system that converts methane from a dairy farm into electricity, something similar to what you're looking at behind me here. Well, this proposal needed more than just the technical details that we kind of anticipated that we would need. It needed things like a budget and a timeline and personnel. And I remember the class just wondering why we needed to add these important details. That's when we asked our professor, Dr. John Caters, and he said one sentence that would change my life forever. And that sentence is, every engineer needs to know something about running a business. Now, at the time, I remember thinking, really? Like, these two disciplines couldn't be any further apart. <laughs> For example, in engineering, you deal with math and formulas, and you talk all about your technology. And in the business world, it's all about communication, and you use all sorts of acronyms, and you do this thing called networking. So really, how can we possibly bridge these two? Well, fast forward a few years. And I would graduate with my PhD from Marquette, Engi from Marquette University in environmental engineering. And now, I could have taken a very traditional route of becoming a four-year professor at an academic institution, but instead, I took a gamble and got out of my comfort zone. All because I had met another PhD student from Stanford University who was studying the conversion of methane to a plastic substitute. And I thought that technology was so awesome that I moved from Wisconsin to California to help these amazing engineers commercialize this technology. So we incorporated mango materials. And you want to know what the first thing we needed to do was write a business plan, <laughs> which included a budget and a timeline and personnel information all of those things that reminded me of that proposal many years ago. Well, here's a little bit about mango materials. So we take methane, and it's a byproduct of wastewater treatment plants and landfills and agricultural facilities, and we feed it to a specialized set of bacteria. And now these bacteria, through a fermentation technology, actually convert the methane into a long-chain biopolymer. This biopolymer is a plastic substitute and can be converted into many different products. And now these products are stable while you're using them, but when you don't need them anymore, they will more than likely end up right here at a waste facility, where they will biodegrade back into methane, closing the loop and creating a cradle-to-cradle -cradle system. Now, the one of the main applications that Mango Materials is focused on is that of a polyester replacement, because polyester, by definition, is a plastic. So that's right, we're all wearing plastic. <laughs> Actually, over 60% of all clothing is made out of polyester, and more than likely, will end up right here at a landfill when you no longer need it. For example, people in San Francisco, where Mango Materials is based, throw out 4,500 pounds of it, not every week, not even every day, but every hour. Which means that San Francisco could fill a garbage truck full of clothing every six hours. So imagine the opportunity that we have to make your clothing durable and long-lasting, but biodegrade when you no longer need it, therefore reducing this accumulation of waste in the landfill. Now, when we started Mango Materials, I had a very traditional engineering role where I conducted experiments and collected data. But as our company grew, and we were able to hire a few more employees, I was asked to shift from engineering to more of a business role, 
which meant sales, marketing, and outreach. And these outreach activities have taken me to most amazing places, including the Hello Tomorrow Summit in Paris, the Postcode Lottery Green Challenge Finals in New York City, the Fashion for Good Accelerator in Amsterdam, and even the Copenhagen Fashion Summit, where many fa famous brands and designers convened to look at the materials of the future when it came to fashion. And now while all of these events seem really glamorous, actually I was very much out of my comfort zone because I needed to learn how to talk about our technology with the least amount of technical words possible. <laughs> <laughs> but I love telling our story and that is why I get up in the morning. So I feel that this new role that I have is actually a really good fit for me. So for those of you in the audience that may be in the science field and possibly interested in transitioning to business or even starting your own business, I have one tip for you. You need to learn how to tell everyone, including your own family, what it is you're actually doing. <laughs> and I know that may be out of your comfort zones because as engineers, we love to use technical jargon and to get really deep into the science. But for business, it's all about communication. So simplifying your message will be to your benefit. And I hope I was able to do that for you here today. But believe me, I'm still learning, refining, and polishing with every outreach event I'm able to participate in. But no matter where my travels take me, I will never forget getting out of my comfort zone, bridging those disciplines. And it all started when I was told that every engineer needs to know something about running a business. Thank you.